I guess a vital portion of the human existence is when man is visited with misfortune. He invariably will look his eyes to the heavens and say, why me? Why, with the millions and millions of people in this world, am I asked to carry a cross? And yet, if I'm to be honest with you and with myself today, I have to ask the same question when good fortune comes my way. Why me? Why, with the millions and millions of more deserving people, would a red-haired kid with a hole in his pants and his shirt tail hanging out playing stickball in the streets of New York wind up in Cooperstown? Why me indeed? I don't have the answer to either question for either situation, but I do know how I feel. I want to sing, I want to dance, I want to laugh, I want to shout, I want to cry, and I'd like to pray. I'd like to pray with humility and with great thanksgiving. I have a lot of thanks to give. I would like to thank my parents. I would like to thank my wonderful wife and children who pay the bill of loneliness and separation while I'm away. I'd like to thank Red Barber and Connie Desmond who cared about that skinny red-headed kid 33 years ago and made sure that he would do reasonably well. I would like to thank my partners today, Jerry Doggett and Ross Porter. I would like to thank the O'Malley family, to Walter and Kay, bless them both, and to Peter and to Terry. I would like to thank the writers who have been more than generous to me over the years. I'd like to thank the Dodgers, both Brooklyn and Los Angeles, and all of the people along the way. And I'd like to conclude with a story. There is a legend in the West of an Indian chief who was wont to test the manhood of his young braves by making them climb up the side of a mountain as far as they could in a single day. And at daybreak on the appointed day, four braves left the village. The first one came back in the late afternoon with a sprig of spruce to show how high he had climbed. Later that afternoon, Another came with a branch of pine, and much later in the day, the third came with an alpine shrub. But it wasn't until late that night, by a full moon with the stars dancing in the heavens, that the fourth brave arrived. What did you bring back? How high did you climb? asked the chief. And the brave said, where I was, there was no spruce nor pine to shield me from the sun. There was no flower to cheer my path. There was only snow and ice and barren rocks and cold, hard ground. My feet are torn and bloodied. I'm worn out and exhausted. I'm barehanded, and I have come home late. But, and then a wondrous look came into his eye, and he said, I saw the sea. For 33 years, the good Lord has allowed me to do what I've always wanted to do, broadcast my favorite game. He has allowed me to climb my mountain. And today, thanks to the Ford C. Frick Award, I thank you for sharing this moment with me, because believe me, today, I saw the sea. Thank you. <laughs>